Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here from New York City in my office, the offices of Hansen versus Predators here on the YouTube channel of the same name. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, as always, Wednesday night, we try to connect with you guys and talk about something interesting. It's been a wild couple of weeks. Last week, we came to you from London, where I was at a conference uh, on aviation security, specifically talking about human trafficking, which was enlightening and, and important and uh, in fact, yielded a couple of stories that we'll be getting into later. But tonight, um, I have a very special guest, a fellow I've known for a long time with whom I have collaborated, Sean Reck. And Sean is working on a, a film. He's a filmmaker based out of uh, the Cleveland area. He's working on a film called Convicting a Murderer. Now, you may remember that back in December of 2015, Netflix came out with a, um, a special called Making a Murderer, and it involved the cases of Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey, who were both accused in the murder of Teresa Halbach in Wisconsin. Very controversial case, and the filmmakers in that project laid out a case in which they pretty much claimed that both uh, Dassey and Avery were wrongfully convicted. It stirred up a huge hornet's nest of controversy. Uh, there were uh, motions filed and new trials and rulings. And it, it was really a high profile deal. And if you were uh, anywhere near a TV back during that time, you, you I'm sure will remember it. it spawned conspiracy theories and charges of prosecutorial misconduct. Um, and what I think was kind of lost here is the, the fact that there was a victim who was brutally killed and, and uh, also allegedly sexually assaulted. So for the last uh, uh, couple of years, Sean Reck has been looking into this and in the last couple of days has revealed uh, some breaking news in this story. First of all, Sean, thanks for being on the show tonight. How you doing? Good. I'm doing great. And thanks for having me, Chris. You know, it's my pleasure. So explain to me after that just basic thumbnail sketch I gave of the uh, making a murderer scenario. What is it that uh, is new and that is breaking based upon your investigation of this uh, the story? Well, the big piece of news that caught it, that garnered a lot of attention the last few days is that uh, a convicted murderer who is in prison in Wisconsin uh, has offered up a confession in the murder of Teresa Hallbach. Uh, in which he said uh, that he committed the crime and he framed Stephen Avery and he actually even joined the uh, anti-law enforcement bandwagon and said that, uh, you know, he, he conspired with, with police and prosecutors to put Avery away. And uh, so, so he, he, this is a guy who, uh, had a different position before, but, right. uh, but this, this was, a, a, a you know, I learned about it when, when I was fact checking and I set up a prison call with him and he just shocked me with it. It turns out that about a week earlier, he sent a written confession to Stephen Avery's lawyer, Kathleen Zellner in Chicago. So, um, you know, we, we stumbled upon it. Uh, she already knew about it. Um, we turned it over to her, an audio recording, turned it over to Brendan's attorneys at Northwestern and turned it over to the state of Wisconsin. Now, this is a shocking revelation that Joseph Evans Jr. in prison, a convicted felon, actually said to you, and you have this on tape, that he was the one who killed Teresa Halbach and not Stephen Avery or Brendan Dassey, correct? Yeah, he said... Uh... He, uh, he, there's a line he gave me, uh, he said, uh, I know for a fact that Stephen Avery did not kill Teresa Halbach because I did. That's a and direct quote. if that was true, that would turn this case upside down once again, correct? Right. If that were true, um, it would turn the case upside down. Now, look, th th this has been kind of a, you know, an iffy confession from the beginning because of who he is. This is a guy who wrote a nine page letter saying that he was in the prison yard, befriended Stephen Avery and Stephen Avery confessed the whole thing to him. And in this letter is, is, you know, he confirms what 
could have been informed by hindsight, of course. He could have read about the case or watched, you know, making a murder or something. And he and he he kind of listed all these things that Stephen supposedly told him and added a whole bunch of lurid details, terrible, terrible right. things. And um, you know, we we didn't necessarily believe that. That was the reason we were doing the interview. We were gonna I was going to try and jam them up on a couple inconsistencies and uh, you know, so we could discard that letter and not, not really include it in our, in our docu-series. That was a reason for the call. And uh, so when the guy sticks by something for 18 months, tries to hurt somebody and then says, Oh, never mind that it was a lie. You know, are you going to believe him now? And, and I guess the question is, was he being Joseph Evans jr. The, 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 uh, the guy who made the confession was he lying in the beginning or is he lying now? What do you think? I th I think he was pro he's probably lying in both situations. Uh, that that's my that's now my gut. I didn't say that in interviews over the last couple of days, but you know now that I found out uh, that when he sent Attorney Zellner that uh, that confession, he included a deposit slip for his girlfriend's checking account. That's not. That's. That, and what that's, does that? What does that prove? That he was paid by somebody to? Uh, no, it a deposit slip, a blank a deposit slip, so that oh. Zellner Zellner could use that to deposit money into his bank account as a prepayment or a down payment on the hundred thousand dollar reward that was offered a couple of weeks ago. So, so there's a hundred thousand dollar reward for information in mm -hmm. the case against Stephen Avery and yeah. Raymond Dassey. Specifically, yes. in this case, against Avery, who convicted, who is convicted of the murder of uh, Teresa Halbach. So he sends to Avery's lawyer, uh, besides this confession to the killing of Halbach, he sends a bank deposit slip in the name of his girlfriend for the hundred thousand dollars. What do you? I, I believe it was in his girlfriend's name. It wasn't for a hundred thousand. It was, I think, it was for thirteen thousand. You know, a reasonable down payment, and uh, <laughs> which is bizarre. Okay, so so. The, when you hear that, you're like, oh, how can anybody take this seriously? Well, here's what I'm going to say in defense of taking it seriously. This is somebody who murdered somebody in the state of Wisconsin, uh, who was in prison for murdering somebody in the state of Wisconsin, who was running around free when Teresa Halbach was killed. So it's at least got to be looked at. So Joseph Evans Jr. is now serving time for a murder unrelated for murder, to that of yeah. Teresa Halbach. Murdering his wife. Murdering his wife. But he was free at the time Teresa Holbach was killed. Correct. Is it possible that he actually, in your opinion, based upon your investigation, is it possible that he committed that crime and that Stephen Avery, uh, and by extension, Brendan uh, Dassey, did not? Uh, it's highly doubtful. Um, you know, he did. He talked and talked and talked, you know. To me, I just shut. I, I was so flabbergasted when he started confessing. I just shut up and let him talk, and he just went on and on. And he 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 stuck to the publicly known timeline, trying to explain many things away that would contradict this theory, uh, as if he almost as if he had notes in front of him. But I'm I'm guessing. I I can't prove that. Um, but he went through and and uh, you know I sent it to our fact checker. Um, who's a subject matter expert on this case. And the fact checker responded, well, there are only about 300 things wrong with this. Right. So I, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's got to be investigated. It's got to be taken seriously. Will it, will it turn out that he's the killer? Highly doubtful. Um, you know, I'm sh Kathleen Zellner is very good at what she does. She's marched a lot of people out of prison and, you know, she's not going to quit, you know, and she'll, she may, she may get him out, but I don't think she's going to get him out over this letter. What is the biggest, I should also mention that Vincent Nicotra, is, as always, is with us tonight, moderating this uh, show, which I appreciate, and we'll uh, hear from him in, in a little bit. But um, Sean, you've been working on this convicting a murderer for, for a long time now. What is the, what's the biggest takeaway of your uh, docu series here. We want to tell a complete story. Um, making a murderer 
had a definite point of view. All right. And that is that the, uh, the filmmakers uh, appeared to believe in Stephen's innocence. Now, a lot of people want Brendan Dassey out. I, I want Brendan Dassey out. Okay. Because he was a kid and he was so impressionable and he's developmentally disabled. So no matter what happened, he's done a lot of time and he should come out. He's not going to, he's not going to get out and hurt anybody. He's going to play video games and go fishing. Right. Um, you know, he wouldn't have done he's any. not a threat to society. Yeah, uh, as, as nobody, as nobody thinks he masterminded a crime, but, uh, you know, when, when I watched Making a Murderer, uh, I believed what I saw and I was enraged. I was, I was uh, to the point of being embarrassed as an American because I knew it was broadcast worldwide and just the uh, layer upon layer upon layer of things that, that were wrong right? in this case, uh, the way they were portrayed, um, you know, had me, had me so upset. And but when you do a little further research and, and people started doing it right away, the New Yorker had a, a long form article in which uh, they said, look, if you love making a murderer, be careful, read this first. And it debunked a lot of what was in there. Um, and uh, meaning, uh, for instance, they they say that uh, uh Lieutenant Link and Sergeant Colburn had a vested interest in this case because they were involved in Avery's wrongful conviction. Right. Well, he, they, he had been wrongfully convicted of a sexual assault previous yes, to this case. And, and he was, we don't doubt he was wrongfully convicted right. of the of the Beardenston, of the Penny Beardenston rape. There's he was wrongfully convicted for sure. Um, but we've got some uh, I mean neither Link or Colburn worked um for uh the Manitowoc Sheriff's Department when when that occurred when is you know back when that happened right they were only witnesses because Colburn volunteered information that he took a call that may have something to do with that case much later when he was a jailer and right. working dispatch um so they they acted like these guys were kind of in on the case when Colburn was you know uh, out in the coast guard or something and Link was working somewhere else. You know, there was some, I, I found that out, and I was like, "Boy, I feel a little bit misled." Right. You know, they, they had a, almost a whole episode on blood vials, um, saying that they were tainted and that someone took blood out of a vial because there was a hole in it, and they planted that blood in Avery's car, and they made a really compelling case for that. And it turns out that every single vial in that evidence room had a hole in it because that's how they put the blood in it. They were never going to use that evidence. Well, we got in into all that uh, when we were doing Crime Watch Daily and, and we had an interview with the, the prosecutor on the case. And when you, you peel away some of these things that were brought up as, as major fines or developments in the original uh, uh, you know, series, uh, Making a Murderer, not <clears throat> everything was exactly as it was portrayed. Right. Well, they, um, they, they were... A they they were skewed, you know, in his favor. There are calls between them and Stephen Avery, you know, they were doting. You know, they really they really loved the guy, and um, they were working to get him out of there. And um, so, I think that they, uh, I think that they had a, a an agenda and a point of view. And there's nothing wrong with activist journalism if you're transparent, right? Okay, but you can't change things. You can't edit what people say uh, to make them mean different things. And they did that on in, in more than one instance, which we're going to point out. Uh, they, uh, uh, you know, minimized a lot of things. They minimized the kidnapping charge uh, for which he also served time during the rape sentence. Uh, they minimized the facts of that case. We're going to get into the whole, all the facts. That doesn't mean, that doesn't necessarily, you know, we're not going to, we're, we're not going to at the end of this thing say, now believe this. We're just going to tell the entire story, and the viewer can make up their mind. And the, 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 uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, go the, ahead. the funny, the, fu the the phenomenon that really blows me away is that this is created. Uh, there are about 40 million fans of 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 making a murder uh, from from the best of uh, our, what we can estimate, and they created. Uh, an online subculture. You can find a lot of it, a lot of them in Reddit. 
of people who believe Stephen is innocent. And those folks have moved on from almost everything that was in Making a Murder. And they've moved on and, and dug deeper and been home detectives. And they found all kinds of other things that, that, that they take quite seriously. And they, they want investigated. And they want, you know, they're doing FOIA requests and everything. But they, they have a little list that we found of like, like, hey, don't argue the blood. It's a moot point. Don't, you know, they, they listed all these major, like, tenets of making a murderer saying, yeah, don't, don't, don't argue that. You're not going to win. Let's, ju you know, just focus on this new stuff. So that's, a, it's amazing that making a murderer created this, uh, all these activists, but the activists have move on, moved on from the facts portrayed in making a murderer. That's, that's what's, at least in the first season. Let's talk about the case for a minute, uh, Sean. In this case, it was alleged that uh, Teresa Halbach, who is a photographer for Auto Trader magazine, uh, goes out to the yard where uh, Stephen Avery worked or had an affiliation, ostensibly to take pictures of cars, used cars. And, and she did this frequently for, for her job. Take me from there. What happens, uh, according to prosecutors? According to prosecutors, Stephen lured her in the house and, uh, and you know, they're going on Brendan Dassey's original confession that he restrained her, um, had sex with her and killed her. And, uh, then Brendan, he called Brendan over to, uh, to help him dispose of the body and, um, and then he uh, hit her car, and uh, you know, it's uh, those are those are the basic facts of the case. That's what the, the prosecutor prosecution alleges. Now, uh, truthers, people on Reddit will tell you that the prosecution actually put forth a slightly different theory, in or a, a different theory in uh, Brendan's prosecution. That's one of the things that uh, say the prosecutors who use two different storylines. It's something that we that we get into and that we address in our series. Did you interview the original prosecutor in the case? Yes, we uh, we secured uh, an, uh, multiple interviews with Ken Kratz. We interviewed Tom Fossbender, who was the state investigator, who they, this crowd calls him Tom Factbender. You know, that's their nickname for right. him. Right, I've seen that. Um, <clears throat> and then the, uh, the officer who was probably most vilified was Sergeant Andrew Colburn. And uh, we, he actually sat for some interviews with us. Um, not only to talk about why he did what he did and explain, you know, explain some of this, some of these things that people see as inconsistencies, but also to talk about the ramifications that that series had on his life. Uh, they've been, all of these people have been profoundly affected, which probably gives, uh, you know, those who hate them great joy. Uh, they, they set out to destroy their lives and they were pretty successful. Did they fix a case on Stephen Avery based on a confession, partly, of nephew Brendan Dassey, who was developmentally disabled? If if they did, that conspiracy would require quite a few co-conspirators among multiple agencies uh, who were all willing to risk their lives, their retirement, um, their reputations, their futures, to save an insurance company from paying a claim to Stephen Avery. If the money was the motivation, putting them back in so he wouldn't win the case. So it, talking about the lawsuit on the wrongful conviction of the previous right. sexual assault. His his wrongful conviction lawsuit, which was you know probably, you know, of the time he served, I think you know six or seven years. Were actually for the rape, and you know some states will pay up to two million a year uh, in those types of lawsuits. So he it could have been a significant settlement. Do you believe Ken Cross when you interviewed him, the prosecutor? Did I did I personally believe Ken Kratz? Um, yes, I mean we look we we fact check his stuff, and he, he struck me quite honestly. And I didn't interview him personally, but he was interviewed for Crime Watch Daily, and he, he struck me as you know, and I've been at this a long time. Uh, Ken Kratz seemed like a pretty straight shooter who got tangled up in this thing um, on a piece that was a point of view piece, clearly uh, on Netflix. He's a guy. 
he's a guy who I told him once, I said, you know, Ken, because we had a debate. Um, uh, we, we actually let a truther sit with him for two hours in a courthouse and confront him. And they went at it. I mean, they went at it for two hours. This is uh, as part of your documentary. It's your... Part of a part of our documentary. We are one of our big goals is to really have a nice fast pace, with, and not have that art house pace that you saw with with making a murderer. Uh, we want to kind of have a little more. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we want twenty and twenty five year olds to really enjoy watching this and right the, the, to hit them with you know just have a, a little faster pulse. So this is one of the things we did. And I told Kratz after that, you know, debate, he won some points, but he was, he's, he can be very abrasive in how he does things. Okay. He can. So, so I said, some, I go, listen, Ken, even when you win, sometimes you lose because the way you come off. Uh, so he's, he's not, he's, he's, he's not, you know, I don't think, I don't think anybody's going to, make someone who hates them love them. Uh, I think it's important to give them a chance to explain everything. Um, do I, do I believe him? Well, I got to tell you that some of the, you know, some of what he said uh, didn't fact check, you know, but, but things change over time. Right. And I told him, I said, Hey, look, this, this was wrong. I say, Oh, I had that wrong. Sorry about that. And I, you know, he's okay about it, but I just, we just tell him like, like, no, we got the documents that didn't match. So, I mean, he, what, what he says isn't perfect, but you know, we, so I try to keep myself out of it. We, we very much uh, want to be clinical and we want to just show the audience everything and let them make up their mind, having heard the whole story and having heard from law enforcement as well. A lot of people will probably watch this and believe what they've believed all along. Uh, believe that uh, there was a law enforcement conspiracy. But I'll tell you one thing, they're going to know more about this case and more about what these people think and feel when they're done watching our series. And they will have been entertained. What do you think convicting a murderer, your your documentary that's uh, almost finished, what do you think the, 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 the major impact will be? It's as much an examination of how to make a documentary or a docu-series as it is an examination of this case. And that sounds really snarky and highfalutin and presumptuous, but documentarians and television journalists who do, you know, magazine programs and factual work, if we're not working in fantasy or with a script, we are journalists. Okay, I consider myself a long form journalist. They bent things so badly that it did not meet journalistic standards. Right. And when and they were being interviewed and they were confronted, uh, mildly confronted during some of their media after the first season, they said, hey, look, we're not journalists. We entertained, which they did. Um, right. But we're not journalists. Well, I've, they not I've only got, entertained. This really started a whole genre of, you know, this point of view, true crime, you know, docu-series on, uh, you know, on, on television for Netflix and in, in other places. Yep, I mean, we've, right we've now, made this stuff and, too. And it's job security for guys like me and guys like you because, you know, the networks right now can't get enough of them. I've got three or four working right now, and, and I'm sure you do too. Making a Murderer, yeah, we've got five going. Making a Murderer helped my first movie, A Murder in the Park. Because when it was done, people were jonesing for more of this stuff. And they go, look, here's 15 movies to watch. A bunch of people put out lists. Here's 10 movies to watch after making a murderer. And uh, a, a murder in the park, our film was on a lot of those lists. Right. Uh, so it, it actually, you know, our, our TVOD numbers went up. Uh, Netflix bought it. You know, Netflix just bought our second film, White Boy, also. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> They bought the second TV window for that, but uh, it, it, that, that it helped us. But like we want to, we want to talk about, and we're, we talk to journalism experts and content an analysts. You know what are the rules when you're doing advo advocacy journalism? You can advocate, like I said, you've got to be transparent, and you've got to tell the truth. You can't manipulate. Um, and we're going to show some manipulation. So. 
we want people to be aware of of the information that's being present, presented to them and make sure they check it out. And we want to start a conversation in the filmmaking community of whether documentarians or journalists or not. The Inter International Documentary Association, of which I'm a member, uh, there are people in there who have a, a point of view that we are not, we are not journalists, that we're entertainers. So, you know, we, this has got to be worked out because these guys, some of the, these guys' lives were profoundly affected. They can't go on vacation. They can't go to an airport. Uh, their kids had to leave their colleges and change their last names. Profoundly affected. You should hear the death threats, how creative some of them are. I've got 37 audio CDs of threats. Wow. Um, just to get guys the, the prosecutors and the police involved in this investigation. Just Colbert. Just Andy Colbert. Wow. Yep. What was the official cause of death? Remind me on the death certificate for uh, Teresa Halbach. Um, you know, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't answer that question. Um, it was, I know it was, um, I mean, obviously they did multiple things to her and I, and I can't answer it. In the state, in the state, they found her body. I don't know how they can determine. Right. So they never actually Look, determined. They alleged, they alleged that, uh, she was, um, I believe that her throat was cut. They alleged that, uh, she was shot several times, even or a few times, even though she was. Uh, but the the state of the body died. did not did not reveal the actual. No, no, death. she was. Her bones were broken up and uh, uh, and uh, ba badly broken up and uh, and burned. You know, you mentioned uh, the white boy, white boy Rick Richard Rorschi Jr. The the film you did on that, and and I should tell folks if you don't know, uh, Sean did a great job uh, on this uh, particular. Um, show as well and uh, i was interviewed for it and that's actually how i got to know sean wreck um the white boy rick richard Worshi jr story uh involves a uh, rick who was 17 years old back in the uh, 1980s and was an informant for the fbi in detroit when i was a reporter in detroit years ago and he left that role and became you know a pretty heavy duty cocaine dealer as a young white teenager in, in what was then a very, um, a very inner city uh, business. And he was a, an anomaly and he got caught and ended up being convicted under Michigan's uh, over 650 lifer law and received a, a mandatory life in prison sentence. Now that has been rolled back, but Rick is still you know, 30 some years later, still in prison, um, actually now down in Florida because of a, another charge he picked up while he was behind bars on the uh, Michigan case. I mean, he's been in prison so long now that actually my son interviewed him when he was still in Michigan uh, a year plus ago. So that's how long it's been. But I, I covered the story, broke the story back in the days of Channel 7 Action News in Detroit. And uh, have followed it and kept in touch with Rick, and and it's it's a travesty, I think, by all by all estimations, that he's still in prison for this. What is he? He's the longest serving nonviolent offender in the history of Michigan. Is that right, Sean? I, well, I know I know he's def. I think he's the longest serving juvenile non nonviolent offender. Um, one of the longest in the country. You know. And, for, for not being not for not having murdered anybody, and that, there's no violence. And, and there was a, there was a lot more to this uh, politics, and he was uh, had a relationship with the niece of uh, Mayor Coleman Young at the time, whose uh, husband was in prison for dealing cocaine. Johnny Curry, mm -hmm. uh, can't think multiple Curry. attempts yeah. on his life. Yeah, it, it was a it's a crazy story. People can see it on Stars now. It's on Stars uh, now. It's on Stars Network. Yeah. Check this out, and I'm not saying it just because I was interviewed for it. I'm just to have a have a uh, a minor role in it, but it, it's really compelling. And when you talk about, you know, all this equity and sentencing that's become, you know, such a big issue across the country, um, was he an angel? No. Did he commit the crimes? Yes. He'll admit that. I mean, I did a whole uh, podcast radio show on it uh, where we had, you know, the FBI agents on the original case who are saying, look, it's time for him to get out. Some of the cops on the original case, it's time for him to get out. You know, a lot of uh, things came out during his various parole hearings about him being involved in murders or tangentially involved in murders. Well then charge him with a murder, you know, charge him if you've got evidence, but don't, 
you know, create rumors in, in a whisper campaign to keep somebody in prison. You've got to have facts and evidence there. So people can check that out. And, um, and his status, when, when is he due to get out now? I, I believe he's scheduled to get out uh, near the end of, of next year, near the end of 2020. Got it. All right. Well, check out uh, Sean Reich's documentary. I should also say there was a film uh, called White Boy with Matthew McConaughey uh, that was out, I don't know, a year and a half or so ago. It was, it was uh, pretty good, too. I mean, it, w- it was based on the on the show. Sean's uh, project was really, you know, the facts of the case. It, it's, it's good stuff, though. I, and, you know, I hear from people all the time who find this um, film of yours and had no idea that I was even a part of it. And, and at least five times a month, I get a text from somebody or a cousin saying, hey, I saw this uh, this documentary. And, and like you said, it, you know, people get led to it through other things on Netflix and, and other channels. So it's mm-hmm. on stars, you say? Yeah, it's on the stars network. And we, stars I appreciate network. you. I appreciate you being a part of it. Yeah, no, it was great. So uh, hang with me for a minute. Vincent uh, Nicotra, as I said earlier, is with us as always moderating all this. And he's keeping an eye on the uh, questions and comments tonight on Hanson versus Predators. Uh, Vincent, let's uh, talk to some folks in the audience. Sean, hang with us in case there's a question for you as well. And, and sure. what do you got for us, Vincent? I cannot hear Vincent. Vincent, we can't hear you all of a sudden. I'm not sure why that is. I apologize. I had my mic on mute. There you go. Sean, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you doing? Good. There's a few questions in the the chat, and they want to know what was on the woman's uh, certificate of death. What was the cause of death? Yeah, Chris just asked me that, but uh, the – I haven't haven't looked at the death certificate. We have – content analysts and and uh, field producers uh, who are working with the editors to put everything together. So, um, you know, I, I know that she was, I know that, you know, they, what they allege. Um, right. But I mean, the, the, whatever's on the certificate of death is, 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 is based on what they're gleaning from finding a right. bunch of crushed burn burned bones. I mean, they basically burned the body, right? After allegedly stabbing it, shooting it, and strangling her. Uh, well, burned the body and, um, and placed the bones, uh, turns out, in, in, in more than one location, which is a big point of, uh, of, of dissent for, for, for the truther crowd. And when, uh, Sean, do you think we'll see convicting a murderer? When do you think that's going to be uh, out there? I know you're talking to some distributors and networks right now. It'll it'll be uh, it'll be done uh, it'll be through legal by March and then uh, well we've been approached by some streamers but we, we have never really offered this up yet uh, to anybody we're going to get it all finished we don't want any notes we don't want anybody to tell us you know how to change it so right. we're gonna we're gonna make it the way we want to make it and then uh, uh, whoever wants it we'll just we'll find a home for it and uh, and people can can see it and judge for themselves you know there's a team of 22 people working on this. So I'm sure that there I'm sure there are going to be people who say, oh, my God, the director doesn't know what's on the birth certificate. Well, that, you know, well, no, that's I mean, first of all, uh, you know, having covered these cases for, you know, 37 years, uh, they don't always know in a case like this where there's so many, so many horrifying things that have done to a, another human being. But Vincent, uh, what else do we have out there? What are, what are other people asking? Uh, Nina Cabano. Uh, she wants to know if you had direct conversation with uh, Joe Evans. Yeah, yeah, I I, I spoke with him uh, several times, and uh, you know we recorded the conversations too. Yes, I'm, I'm the one who took the you know the oral confession. And how was your feelings on that? Uh, your your emotions. Uh, how how did you handle yourself in that situation when you were talking to Joe Evans? Well, when he shocked us by not talking about the letter and saying, you know, the purpose was to debunk his letter. He debunked his letter in a matter of seconds. So I was like, well, our job is done here. We know that this letter is BS. Um, But then he proceeded to start talking about how he did it. So I let him talk and uh, and recorded it. Uh, So I I, I was just kind of miffed. I was just shocked by it. And... uh, you know, it's, it shouldn't be something that stays in our hands. It has to. We have to turn it over. We're not right. going to. We're not going to withhold it and and tease it. Uh, you know, if we were cynical, we would we would hold it and then tease it when somebody 
buys this thing and we say catch you know catch a series on such and such streaming service uh and by the way there's a confession you know that that would be the awful thing to do right but obviously you know as a as a journalist as a producer as a director you know somebody drops this on you and i've been in that situation a number of times it's like oh my god you know it's like what do i have here and how do i flesh this out you know it's a big deal right it it, it was shocking and um your gut on joe evans again is that he he's got an ulterior motive here and it's not necessarily the truth yeah, I, I think the fact that he sent uh, the fact that he sent a deposit slip makes this almost comical. Right, right. Now you uh, made some news this week, though, on this, uh, on the on some of the networks and other places, uh, even up until uh, today and probably the rest of this week. So, yeah, uh, they they, they want to talk about it. So I just I tell them like I told you, just how the whole thing went down. Perfect. All hey, right, hey, what else? Uh, Lt. Colburn. Uh, this goes to Sean. He thinks that Joe Evans is a liar. What, what's your opinion on that? Uh, the strong possibility he's right. Yeah. Well, Joe, Joe Evans is a de- demonstrable liar because he, uh, yes, Joe Evans is a liar because he wrote a letter that was a lie and he admitted right. it was a lie. So, you know, of course, Joe Evans is, is, has lied. Okay. Okay. All right. What else, Vincent? Uh, when is your show going to be aired on Netflix? Or is well, it going to be on Netflix or Stars? You know, there's a possibility it'll be on Netflix. Netflix has bought everything else we made, crime-wise. Um, but, uh, you know, this this is not – we didn't make this in cooperation with them or the original filmmakers. Um, so uh, it'll be done in March. I would assume it finds a home by May. And then it's up to them as far as timing on, on when it goes out. But uh, I would assume next summer people right. will be able to watch this. It's now a 10-part series. Wow. Well, we'll look forward to that, Sean. Thank you so much for being on Hanson versus Predators, the YouTube channel tonight. Um, I'll, uh, I'll track you down later in the week, and we'll talk about some other things. But uh, thanks for being on, and good luck with the uh, the new film and and uh, I'm sure it'll be as good as the uh, other two with which I'm very familiar and, and you guys should really check it out. It's uh, and, and take a look at the white boy uh, Rick uh, film. It's, it's really good. And it, it, it lays out a fascinating case. It's another one of those cases where it's like, how does this happen in America? You know? Um, and it's stunning. And, and it was interesting for me to, to relive it uh, all these years later. So check that out. Murder in the park is a good one too. So check all those out. Sean, uh, Recently had a little health scare. He's all better and 100% now, so I'm glad you're healthy, buddy, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you soon. I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Vince. You're all welcome. Right. Have a good night, Sean. You too. All right, Vince. Uh, on other topics, I see some more talk about Ice Poseidon, who we focused on uh, a uh, couple weeks ago. And um, uh, ironically, Ice was on his uh, European uh, RV tour when I was uh, over in London for the um, speech of the human trafficking conference we were unable to hook up he was busy doing his thing i was busy doing mine um so you know we'll keep in touch there he he talked about collaboration and some other things and i know that there are people who despise him and think he's a criminal and and uh, there are people who adore him and watch him and every every uh everything he does and says so as always there's three sides to every story, his side, your side, and the truth. But we'll keep an eye on it. I also see some some other interest in some other streamers. And, you know, I'm not going to make this show streamer of the, the week um, show, but uh, I think it's interesting territory, and it's, uh, it's an interesting world, so we'll keep on top of it. We have people working on the next Predator thing. I know you're tired of hearing that and anxious to see it. It is happening. Hey, uh, hey Chris, aren't you supposed to join the RV over? trip? <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was offered that. Uh, Ice and his uh, gal pal uh, uh, said that I could join them, and uh, they got a bet for you. Sadly, and sadly my itinerary didn't uh, didn't allow that. Didn't didn't have it on this trip. Uh, anything else in the uh, in the queue, Vincent, that people want to know about before we uh, bid everybody uh, a good evening? Yeah, we got Gus Johnson coming on. Gus, yeah, I'd like to have Gus on. Actually, we should do that. We haven't talked about him in a while. Uh, how are those guys doing? Have you watched any of their stuff? Or yeah, they're still doing stuff on uh, on uh, YouTube. Yeah. They, they're still plugging away. 
they're good guys. I'd be happy to have them on. Maybe we'll maybe we'll look at that for next week. Why don't you? Why don't we reach out to them and and uh, um, they, they, well, they, they are they, fans. They, they, well, they, I'm a fan of theirs too. I mean, they're they're clever guys, clever young guys. They they for those of you who don't know, and most of you probably do. They when we first started this YouTube channel, we sort of did in connect conjunction with the website, and it was a way to promote that, and it sort of gained some traction, momentum, and we got busy with this as well, but. Um, you know, we were kind of new at it, and so they were they were teasing me about uh, the uh, the early start, which is fine. So uh, every week we learn a little bit more. We got Chirons, we got audio working, we got new mics and cameras, and every every week we uh, chip away at it. So anyway, Vincent, thank you to you for being a part of this once again. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. Uh, we'll see you next week, and uh, a lot of exciting things on the television front too that I'm going to be able to talk about very shortly. So. We're going to um, um, we're going to uh, get to work on those, and I'll be traveling doing that. But I'll keep you posted along the way. So thanks for tuning in to Hanson versus Predators. Don't forget the website Hanson versus Predators uh, New merch is on the way, and uh, more shows across the line. So take care, have a good night, and I will see you soon. Have a good night, everyone.